With Gojo vs Sukuna going at full throttle, this comes with fans advocating for either side, and that is what prompted this video. I've seen a lot of comments on my videos and in conversations I've had related to Gojo vs Sukuna, people keep bringing up one argument. Some fans say that whatever Gojo has done so far doesn't matter because Sukuna hasn't shown his true technique yet. Other fans hold the same belief, but they're more so trying to theorize over what Sukuna's arsenal really is instead of trying to tie it into power scaling or Gojo vs Sukuna. It's a theoretical approach to the subject, the approach of figuring out and analyzing the nature of Sukuna's technique, and if there's more to this technique we haven't seen yet. This really interested me, and I wanted to see what people have come up with for what's Sukuna's true technique. Obviously, these are just theories. Some of the things we'll be covering are going to be speculative, but I'm going to be showcasing the strongest theories for Sukuna's curse technique. Once again, this isn't going to be tied in with any sort of power scaling or me trying to push forward some idea that Sukuna's holding back against Gojo. For this video, I'm only concerned about the theories people have about Sukuna's technique and that's it. Another thing I want to clarify is that these are not my theories. I'm just going to be presenting other people's theories in the best way possible. I might add some of my own stuff to make it stronger, but aside from that, these theories are not mine. And just as how I'm going to be presenting these theories as best as I can, I'll also be pointing out any weak points, so I can give you guys the best perspective possible on these theories. If you guys like this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, make sure to let me know in the comments, and let's get straight to it. This first theory covers two things, the lore behind Sukuna's curse technique and potential abilities. We'll call this theory the Calamity Theory. This theory basically says that Sukuna's curse technique is a combination of natural disasters. You can say he would have all of the disaster curse's abilities, or just abilities with the disaster curse's element. So fire, water, wood, etc. The first piece of evidence in support of this theory is this panel which is chapter 111 page 21. In this panel what you want to look at is the back end of the fingers. You'll see at the stub of these fingers they have different elements grown on them. One has like a shrub growing on it, another has a very rocky mineral base, there's one that appears to have a wooden base, and the most intriguing one is the one which appears to have squid tentacles. What supports this even more is that the earth urban legend Sukuna is based off of, when he was removed from his grave, he caused tsunamis, earthquakes, tornadoes, amongst other things. The other part of this theory is that since Sukuna is known as the king of curses, and the disaster curses were born from the fear of these disasters, then Sukuna's technique would be including the elements of the disaster curses. Not only that, but Gege in a Q&A called Sukuna more of a natural calamity than a cursed user. The issue with this is that it's too vague. This could be entailing that his abilities are based on natural disasters, and it could be something else. The last part of the theory is that since the disaster curses are fueled by the fear of natural disasters, and since Sukuna is known as the king of curses, then he has the element of the disaster curses. I understand why someone would try to make this connection, but it doesn't follow. Now obviously, Sukuna's power is what gives him the title, because his power strikes fear into people. You just don't call a guy the king of something if he isn't at the top of the category. But we don't know what said power is. It'd be a jump to say anything outside of what's been shown to us. It's fear of his power. That's why they call him the King of Curses. But that doesn't mean he needs to have the elements of the Disaster Curses to be called the King of Curses. He can still be the strongest sorcerer without having these elements. I'm not saying this is 100% the case. There's still a possibility that they can be calling him that because of him having the elements. But I think that jump is assuming already that his power has those elements. And that's a weak point in the theory. And I find all the other points before this one much more convincing. The next theory we'll be covering is the Sukuna Chef Theory. This theory isn't something that's telling us about other abilities, but more so the nature of his technique. That's the explanation behind his technique. Like the name of the theory says, Sukuna's technique is based on being a chef slash cooking. Cleave and dismantle instead of cutting people, to us, this would be the equivalent of cutting up ingredients to cook. The flame arrow would be to heat up and cook the meal. The poison would represent food poisoning. The giant mouth Sukuna has on his stomach and on his domain would represent eating. In the cover for chapter 117, Sukuna has some weapons and one of them is a small blade and the other is a trident-like weapon. This can be indicative 
representative of a knife and fork. Here are some references that the translator Lightning found that can help support this cooking theory. If you guys want to check it out yourselves, I'll put the link to the thread in the description. Malevolent Shrine uses the old style kanji for kitchen. In current times, it's used as shrine, but in old style, it does mean kitchen. The kanji for cleave can mean to prepare food. When Sukuna cuts up Ryu and the first finger bear, the kanji means to cut up slash slice up in parenthesis fish. When he's about to fight Maharaga, he states, let's start with a little taste, shall we? And after he's done destroying Shibuya, he switches with Yuji so Yuji can see all the heinous things he did. And Sukuna tells him, hey kid, bon appetit. That translation of hey kid, bon appetit comes from the Learn English with JJK book. In the Yorozu fight, Sukuna talks about Urame having to prepare the feast. And once again, in the Gojo fight, he makes another reference to cooking. He tells Gojo, Satoru Gojo, you're just a fish on the cutting board. You may flop around a lot, but you're still a nameless fish. And there's another statement where he says, first, I'll strip away your scales. The editor's note for chapter 118, which is when Sukuna uses Malevolent Shrine, says, the kitchen of overwhelming death appears. As you guys can see, Sukuna does make a lot of cooking references. A nice addition you could throw in is how Urame would be complementary to Sukuna because of her ice technique, which in the context of cooking would be the equivalent of freezing and preserving. I said that this theory doesn't really lead us to other techniques he hasn't used, but some people like to say that if his technique is based on cooking, you would need water, air, wood, etc. Basically, he would also have the other elements that are used for cooking. I think if his technique is based on cooking, what he has now is sufficient, so I don't think he's gonna have other other elements. Overall, this is a really good theory and I wouldn't be surprised if this is what Sukuna's technique is based off of. This next theory is also pretty well supported. It doesn't have a preponderance of evidence like the chef theory, but there is just one piece that is undeniable. This next theory we'll be covering is the Sukuna tattoo theory. This theory basically says that Sukuna's tattoos can store abilities slash curse techniques. The main reason this theory was developed is because when he's fighting Jogo and he uses his flame ability, he says open, and there's just some black square in the text bubble. People have pointed out that that same square is on his front shoulder area. Furthermore, in the art cover for chapter 117, we see Sukuna holding a trident and a knife, but on his face, he has no markings. And when we see him without said weapons, he has a trident-like mark, which would be his trident weapon, and a straight line, which would be the knife. Also, when he has the four arms, the circles around his arms are only one, but when he just has two arms, it's two circles around it. So the other circle on his arm would be his other two arms. An interesting part of this theory is the similarity between Sukuna and the MC of one of Gege's other work. The way he flicks his finger is similar to how Sukuna does when he activates his curse technique. Not only that, but the MC from Gege's other work uses a box which stores weapons. Weapons. He used a bow and arrow that is drawn similarly to how Sukuna did it. And the box that the MC uses can be what Gege took inspiration for Sukuna's technique, which would align with this theory of store and curse techniques. There's a couple more details to this theory, but I only included the ones I felt were the most relevant. I'm sure there are many more theories out there. I only covered three in this video since these three were by far the most popular within the community. They all seem very plausible and some of them can even work together. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.